Welcome to the very first V for Social Good. And uh, as we all know, it's virtual. Uh, so we're the very first V for Social Good um, event in, uh, in Brisbane and in Australia. So V for Social Good uh, basically help non for profit and charities to uh, make a sense of the data. So it came out of the US, they're very active in Canada, Japan, and Europe, but not in Australia. So we're making um, the first. So well done, everyone. Thanks for your time to participate. I think that's been uh, awesome um, uh, participation. We had 75 people registered for the event and 12 or 13 people that are going to present tonight. And I found about five or six more um, other Tableau, Tableau analysts that, that put their Sunny Street data viz on, online. So I shared the links in the, in the chat and later. So those people are from uh, Canada and Japan. So they won't be here tonight, but they've been working off, offline. So that's uh, really amazing. Uh, also, quick quick thanks to our uh, uh, gold sponsor, the only one, Kitara. So they've been helping uh, helping us uh, doing the data prep. So that's been amazing. So thanks, Shana, and then Wilta. So without you guys, uh, I think the data would have been ready. So uh, great, and you guys, because we virtual, we are saving on the pizza. So you can maybe send us some virtual pizzas later on. Um, so there's a Google form at the bottom there. So if you just join and you still want to, uh, to submit your data viz, uh, there's a bit.ly link at the bottom there. And if you're on social, if you want to submit some selfies or posts, you can use those hashtags at the, at the bottom there. Uh, I also want to remind you of the, of the process. So it's about five minutes uh, for each presentation, uh, roughly. Um, Kyle would be uh, a, a timekeeper. So Carl, you can sort of um, uh, have a time watch and then uh, depending on how much to, uh, time we've got at the end, we can just go uh, with Q&As also. Um, so if you're all familiar with uh, sharing your screen on Zoom, there's a green button. You can sort of start sharing your screen, make sure your microphone is turned on and you've got the, the flow and you can tell us your name, maybe the tool you used, and then focus on the insight and the stories. And for the rest of the crowd, like you, you guys, make sure you mute yourself. Uh, Zoom has a little chat at the, on, the, on the bottom, so you can ask for some questions. And if you have time, we can just uh, have a Q&A at the end. Uh, so I don't know if uh, Nova and um, uh, Sonia, if you want to say a few words, and then we can maybe start uh, the, the proceeding or the, the presentations. Uh, so Absolutely. maybe for a couple of minutes. Just uh, introduce yourself, who you are, what you're doing, and if you're happy to be there. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy to be here. So, hi, everyone. Um, can you see me and hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, Sonia can't be with us. She's absolutely devastated, but she's unwell. It's not COVID-19, so stand down, <laughs> everyone. It's all okay. <laughs> um, but I'm here, and I've also got Nat here with us, and she's our, pu she's our public health um, initiatives coordinator. Uh, and I'm Dr. Nova Evans, and I started this crazy thing called Sunny Street with, with Sonia. Um, so as you all know, I, I'm fascinated to hear what um, I can learn about my own service tonight. That's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've just come from a uh, clinic uh, to, to get here, and um, to, I didn't want to do this in the car, so I managed to make it home. But... To go down to clinic tonight and um, there were more than 30 people um, experiencing homelessness or vulnerability scattered around the car park out the back of the neighbourhood centre and I had to go because I had to implement new procedures you know, into this particular clinic um, to manage the COVID-19 risk. Um, I'm really worried guys and uh, the numbers are just going to get worse and worse and worse so to experience this with you guys and see what you have come up with to be able to tell our story in a different way and in a language that hopefully um, will speak to you know to stakeholders um, you know fundraisers and more most importantly government um, to let them know what we're doing for this unfortunately what is going to be a rapidly increasing problem here in Australia and I'm sure internationally. Um, people need that social connection. People need Sunny Street to be there and to hear their stories and provide their healthcare. 
um, more and more people um, can't afford their medicines. Um, Sunny Street's already um, shouted to patients just this afternoon their medications because they haven't uh, got the funds to, to pay for them. Um, yes, yeah, stuff's getting real. So I just wanted to impart to you that you've made a difference by, by helping Sunny Street and Sonia and I are just blown away with, with your support. We are incredibly grateful to you, Frederick, for making it happen. And then obviously the team at Key Data, you know, it's just, it's just incredible. And um, I just want to express my heartfelt thanks. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who participated. I think that's, uh, as I said, that's the first one in, in Australia and Brisbane. I think we'd, we'll do some more. So I think at the end, I'm going to ask if people have liked the event and if they want to do more, but it looks like there's a, there'd be yes. So thanks, thanks for being the journey as well. Uh, so we're going to start the presentation. So we'll the... start with Jason. I know Jason is here. Yes, I am. And so, off mute. <laughs> so Jason, you got five minutes. I know, I know Jason, you've been amazing. You, you were probably the first one who said, yes, I'm keen to join. And then you went, went above what was sort of required. And then you were very active on, on social. I even invited you to do maybe uh, next week a, a tech debrief so you can yeah. show your tech, that's a different webinar, but uh, uh, thanks Sips, Jason, for what you did. Um, so you got the floor and Carl, five minutes. Cool, cool. nice, okay. Um, so I'll get into the other stuff in terms of what I used and all that kind of stuff. I just want to actually start, kick off and actually focus on um, the data, the problem, and just the way I tackled it. So um, what I've got up here is all available on GitHub, uh, and in terms of actually going through this pitch, I'm actually using uh, the README file itself. So I'm just going to scroll through what I've got. Um, the, the specific thing that I was looking at from problem statement, I know you got questions. I know that the, what I wanted to do is actually tell the story around the data from um, the from the data to outcome perspective. Since Frederick said, outcome, outcome, outcome. So. The outcome that I was really looking at here is how may we help Sunny Streets and the community to scale the number of conversations, not by reducing the quality, but maintaining that value of those conversations. So that was really that focus. And when I really looked at um, the data um, and, and specifically looking at the camp site shifts and locations, um, I really honed into why are there people being turned away, All right? So we can talk to the people that we've got, but what in terms of scale, we really need to actually make sure that we cater for the people that we're turning away for. And as part of the things that I've picked up, um, I did find a few spikes in terms of locations, specifically um, a fair number in Brisbane, um, also, from a time frame perspective, I really saw then um, November 2019 um, being in a time and also uh, six o'clock at night. So, in terms of the data and looking at what I was looking at, um, that really shone out. So, I dove a little bit deeper in terms of locations, um, the shifts, and the numbers and the conversation pieces. Um, and from here, I actually found that most of them came from the Wesley mission, which was a bit bizarre. And out of the number that I saw, there was one particular shift that was actually on the 19th of November, um, where we turned away eight people in that one shift. Um, I looked at different conversation pieces and looked at all that, but then um, I really wanted to focus in, okay, is this a trend? Is this something that we need to be concerned about? Um, so assessing the data, it was interesting. Um, for those patients, the eight patients that turned away, there was no data that was collected around the co shift conversations, which was bizarre. Um, whether there's something that we need to look at, um, whether it's in the data, whether something happened on that day, um, happy to have that further conversation around what happened then. Um, when I looked at the Wesley mission on a different day where we turned away two people, it did look like normal. So um, interesting in terms of how we start looking at the conversations, what happens, and also um, 
how many people are we helping on, on that one day? Um, which then, I think, I know that we had a couple of questions around right at the beginning in terms of tandem and cognium and the data produced. Um, what I'm looking at when we're looking at um, people that we turn away, the conversation pieces and, and the like, is what are the conversations that we're having um, during those periods of time? So um, I then start looking at the different trends of, um, we're finding that across this one shift, as an example, um, we were able to highlight that uh, in this one here with Nat yourself, uh, that health, care, personal history, relationship and housing were important in terms of time. But is time translates into value or into sentiment? Um, that's the question mark that I've got in terms of just relying on the tandem data and potentially further data um, to complement what that what that kind of looks like. That's four so and a half minutes, Jason. Sorry, that's four and a half minutes. Cool. So looking at the time frames, we can see how that all looks like. It's very unstructured. How that looks, um, it's hard to actually. We need to probably look at further value time frames in terms of those conversations. Um, so I'm looking at, so there's probably opportunities in terms of how we actually uh, look further in these conversations. How do we actually look at the staff and volunteers in terms of where they are, such that we can really make sure that we can scale um, the number of people that we're helping. Great, Jason. I don't know if we can virtually clap. <laughs> That's great. And so what I also didn't mention is uh, the discussion we continue offline. So I'm going to be sharing all the links to uh, the Sunny, uh, Sunny Street crew. Uh, and if uh, uh, Sunny Street wants to get in touch with any of you guys and have more questions, uh, whether we set up a, a Dropbox folder and you can dis discuss all those things offline, uh, more than welcome. So, David, are you on? Yes, I'm here. I, I can start uh, chin wagging now if you like. Okay, cool. So, David, you've got the floor. So, share your, your screen with, with Zoom. So, we see your desktop. And then you, sure. you've got five minutes, Max. Yes. Okay, and can you guys see this? Yep, perfect. Okay, so this, is, um, this has been done on a web platform called mappypedia.com, which is actually one that I, a platform that I built um, and just launched towards the start of this year. And the main reason I did that was because I thought, you know, um, people, you know, it'd be good to have an easier way to sort of visualize and, and uh, try and get some um, insights into, into data. So the main focus that I've done is, is I've been looking at the, um, the, QF, the shift, um, the campfire shift measures again. Um, and so the idea is that, so um, you can see the locations of the shifts here. So you can, you know, zoom in. Um, I don't know if that's a smooth zoom for you guys coming through the, um, yeah, it's, the not too bad. it's not too bad. Um, and then, um, oh, what's happening there? And um, and then you can, uh, and then down the bottom is the number of people that have been getting serviced by each of these locations. So if you hover over a dot above the top, you can see, um, you know, so the Sunshine Coast Salvation Army, you can see the blue line that's been highlighted down the bottom that shows you the profile of the number of people that have been getting serviced over time. Uh, or conversations over time. You can see the, um, the shack's been sort of fairly consistent through, throughout time. And, um, and then if you look at the, there's a date across the top here, the 6th of August, you can, so you can actually play this animation and these dots change size and color as, uh, as demand uh, or number of conversations goes up and down. So it can just sort of give you a very quick um, view of, 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 of what's been happening and you can move the slider across the top. But you can also um, make, um, uh, you know, analyze this data in a, in a bit more detail. So if, if you did want to say, um, find out about the number of people that were getting turned, um, turned away, you can click on this graph and, um, and you can say, okay, well, let's, um, uh, let's clear all these and let's look at the, um, where is it? Where was it? Patients turned away. So then we can see here, um, you know, this is the Wesley mission uh, that was spoken about last time. You can also see there's a couple of other locations that have also um, um, turned away people, um, but you can you can make this um, you can uh, you know turn on and off these different filters to get a bit of a feel for what's happening in the in the region, um, and then you can turn them all back on. You can also um, 
uh, find out um, a bit more about, um, you, you can do some sort of really basic um, analysis with it as well. So if you wanted to find out, well, what's the, this is, so each one of these lines is how many people uh, have had conversations um, for each of those locations, but you might be interested to find out what's the total number of people um, that you've been having conversations with. So you can um, sort of come down here and, and sort of make a, uh, you know, turn, turn, the, uh, turn the sum on. So this shows you how many people have been, uh, have been impacted by, by Sunny Street over time. And so you can see that, you know, the busiest time was, you know, 258, um, sort of around the, let's see what date's this. This is probably sort of the 15th of October. It was, it was, it was a very busy day. You can see it's sort of been fairly consistent, but it sort of has dropped off uh, towards the start and the end. You can, um, and if you wanted to look at the total number of conversations that I've had, you can select this cumulative option. So you can see, okay, well, over all this time, we can see that it's been nearly 4,000. Uh, well, actually, this, that's not quite true. This is also counting the number of people that have been turned away. So you'd, you'd want to um, you'd want to turn off uh, the patients turned away option, and then you get a, a bit more of a more accurate view there. So you can kind of see it's been a fairly steady increase there. Um, and you can also, um, if you wanted to look at the number of locations that were active over time, you can select this count option. That's a little bit like the count option in Excel, which just counts the number of values uh, over time. Um, and hang on, I'll turn that one off. So you can see, you know, so at, at the most, there were there were nine locations that were active uh, at any one time. Um, but, you know, you can see that those numbers, the number of locations uh, also corresponds, you know, roughly to the number of people that, that have been having conversations. So there's obviously a direct correlation there. Um, but I just thought I'd, I'd um, you know, put this forward as a, as a tool um, just in case people, you know, just in case the guys at Sunny Street just want to, you know, do some of their own queries and, and investigate the data that way. Um, and that's probably really all I um, all I was going to show at this point. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. But, Thanks, but this, is a, this is a link um, that, you know, can, can be shared if, if people just want to have a look at it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. That's good. That's good. Ed, Nova and Natalie, do you, do you want to save the question for at the end? What's your preference? Um, yeah, I think happy to save it to the end. And that way we make sure we get through everybody. Cool. And I guess, David, if you're... If, uh, Nova, Sonia, and Natalia are happy to look at your tool. I think we, you can sort of have a, a discussion offline and sure. uh, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about that kind of stuff later. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind about which tool we use. I think there's a mix of Power BI, Tableau, your tool, there's Oracle, there's a bunch of R and more complex kind of stuff. So I think it's uh, the, the beauty of that kind of event is uh, we present different tools. So, but I'll, I will leave Sunny Street people to decide what they want to use if they want to use something else at the end. Sure. Cool. Thanks. And, Thanks, Mike. And, Thanks, and, and if we do have time at the end, I do have a, a, a visualization of the spread of the coronavirus um, around the world as well. Which also <laughs> yeah, 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 keep that for later. That, that's obviously off topic for now, though, so I won't show you now. Yeah. Thank you, so, David. Yeah, that's so right. I'm looking at the spreadsheet. Next, we've got Tony. Tony, you still here? Yes, indeed. Cool. Oh, you know the drill? Cool, I recognize that. Okay. Cool, so you got the floor, and then we got timekeepers ready. Uh, so, where am I going to share? Uh, we see your screens now. Oh, no, we see Nathan's. Hang on. Uh, sorry, can you hear oh, me? Yeah. yeah, now we see your screen, Tony. Great, all right. It. Okay, so, when we looked at the uh, data, we were designing it very much for the target audience, which was the CEOs, those people that essentially are out there. And we want them to take a specific action for the whole story because we can display data, but at the end, what uh, Sunny Street are trying to do, obviously, is get support. And obviously that's money or other sorts of services that can be provided. So our theme very much is your giving gives hope. And, and I think this is the thing that we really want to sort of target in on. Because when we started to look at the data, it was, how we say, it was data. And what we want to do is build an emotional attachment very um, first up with, hey, this is not just numbers here. These are people we are talking about. And if you work in the city, you'll see these people around. So what you're able to do is, you know, you can 
click in, zoom in, and have a look at some summary data about what's going on. The number of people that, you know, Sunny Street has helped, the number of females. We also blended this with some Australian stats data based on uh, sort of both the inner Brisbane and Sunshine Coast. And we're saying, hey, at the moment, we help 24% of the people, but there are still another 76%. So it's a huge amount of people uh, that we can still go out there and, and help. And this to us was very, very important. So create that emotional attachment, give that data. And I can imagine Nova standing in front of a group of, of key stakeholders saying, these are the types of people we deal with every day. It could be your mother, your brother, your father. Um, it, it is so easy. Obviously, we've got some other data that's happening there. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna dig a little deeper into that sort of data. And what you can see is all of that information that you know, you've requested, you can break that down into you know, the number of indigenous, the male, female split. But what we found, and this for us was, was very important, was here's the mountain that you actually have. That's the difference, that's the potential that Sunny Street could be reaching out to. We've got a decomposition tree here. And by the way, I should have mentioned all of this is done in Power BI, where you can actually go through and say, well, tell us about, you know, male Aboriginals. You know, tell us about um, what's going on with, with females. You know, um, you know, here we see, you know, 19 to 24 year olds, uh, plus 12 to 18 year olds. And, you know, all of that is sort of interactive and you can get an understanding of what is uh, happening. There. Then we move into what are the challenges that, that we uh, face? And we blended the, the I suppose, the, uh, the T&D uh, data here about the conversations, as well as sort of all the, uh, the medicines and the diagnosis or the active diagnosis that are happening. And no surprise here, you know, you're looking at obviously depression, anxiety are your key sort of uh, diagnosis. And of course, well, the medicines we supply, the antidepressant and anti-anxiety. But what was really huge for us when we looked at it was that it's about talking to these people because we could see uh, uh, people that were active and inactive and we could tell that talking to these people was hopefully all about people's mental health. How do we transition you from off the street into a new life, a new hope, basically? Then looking at, I suppose, where are you actually camping out? Well, there's, you know, I know big secret here, Red Cross Night Cafe, and, you know, you can, zoom in over here, see what the medical consults, the nurse paramedics, let's have a look at where, where are you? Let's zoom in to Brisbane, yep, we've, we've got what's going on there. We also looked at the safety. Uh, the safety of uh, this is just sort of give you an idea. Um, it's a very, it, it appears to be a very, very safe environment, but there are one or two occasions where, hey, if you looked at uh, this sort of data here, we've got sort of the, the median, the average, and of course, if we drill into the minimum, we obviously have a zero. So there's, there must have been some sort of incident at the Marucci Neighborhood Center. Um, all of this, you can zoom in. We thought granularity down to the month. You can have a look at over a period of time, get a real good idea of what's happening in there. And finally, what we did want to do is, I suppose, get a bit of interaction with that stakeholder. So we took a bit of license because we figured that, hey, if you're after laptops, wound care, all of that sort of stuff, it's probably going to cost you about $200 per person to help out. And there's your $80,000 goal. Well, obviously, if we move uh, our thing and we say, hey, let's give, say, $200, our friend down the bottom, hey, she's a little bit happier. What about if then we give $2,000? Guess what? You've just have helped out 
10 people. That's great. So we wanted to um, give uh, as a key takeaway. So thanks for that. That's, that's awesome, Tony. That's impressive. Thanks, thanks for sharing. That's yeah, uh, really good great story, great visual, great story. Um, that's a lot of work right there, Tony. And uh, that's amazing. Uh, it, honestly, it was a it was an absolute passion, and uh, I, I would do this any time, no drama. Cool. What I didn't mention is we also recording the 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 session, so I'm going to put that on YouTube or equivalent, so we, you can sort of play back and then. That'd be useful for Sonia and Nova and, and Nat is maybe play back and maybe get some questions and more insights because I, I know time goes pretty quick. Um, amazing. Thanks again, Tony. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, so quick, quick hello to Vanita. I think Vanita is uh, from the Visual Social Goods uh, chapter in Canada. So I don't know what time it is in Canada, uh, Vanita, but uh, welcome to Brisbane remotely. I don't know if you've got a microphone and you want to, to, to say hello or hi for five seconds. Are you there, Vanita? Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, oh, just a morning, quick hello. Actually. Hey, a great event. It's it's 3.30 in the morning here, so I uh, set my alarm to wake up to, uh, to participate in this event, and it looks like a great one so far, so looking forward to it. All right, that's commitment. <laughs> well done, it's 5.40 uh, 5, p.m. So thank you. Thanks for joining uh, on the other side of the planet. So Shana is next to nine. Shana, where are you? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear ah, you. Wonderful. All right. Hold on. Perfect. Okay. And Shana, Shana th thanks again for the data prep. The prepping ah. the data. <laughs> yes, no, that was a good team effort. I don't know if Devin's on the line as well, but he, he gave a good help out. Um, so hello, oh. Hi, I'm Shana. Um, I um, just have a quick one for today. Um, I do not have a background in health. So the big disclaimer is uh, this was a great personal challenge for me. Um, and I found the data very interesting um, and challenging. And so my focus, uh, once I had a look at all the different data sets, was actually in part of the call to action for the Viz for Social Goods. So the part that really stood out to me was the call for wanting to research and understand the health economics of the service of Sunny Street. Um, and be able to sort of quantify and describe the national impact of such an organisation and why it's so important. Um, so the first step that I did was obviously have a good dive into the web. Understand what you guys provide and how you provide it. The next step was I wanted to know a little bit more about the primary health networks in um, Australia and how they work. So I jumped on to the Australian Institute for Health um, and had a look at some of their healthy community, community indicators. Uh, there's a, quite a lot of data there and open data, which is fantastic to see. Something that jumped out was um, the topic of primary health in some of our indicators. So if we have a look at that, um, there's lots of information here um, about immunisation and GP um, usage by Australians and um, plenty of other indicators that basically indicate how well Australians get access to primary health. So my challenge was to see how I could use the Sunny Street data to sort of compare Sunny Street's patients to where they lay with the Australian average. So um, so you can have a look at how much people spend on GP per year, how many times they... I just got an internet is unstable. Can you guys hear me? Yes, good. Yes. It's yes, a beautiful. bit flaky right. sometimes, so all good. Yeah, no, sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, so how many times you visit a GP, um, how much money you spend on a GP per year. And that was quite interesting to me because I feel like that's sort of the, the entry point to whether you're getting good primary health care. Um, so <laughs> mine is very much still a skeleton and a work in process, but you can sort of see where I'm heading with it. So um, I use Tableau. Um, and as I said, I started to pull out some of the annual metrics and compare them to as best I could to the Sunny Street data. So um, some things that jumped out were like on average, um, only 64% of Sunny Street patients reported that they had visited a GP in the last 12 months. That's nearly 
patient less cash. Um, on average, patients seen by Sunny Street are reported that they only see or visit a GP 2.8 times a year. That's four times less than the national average of 6.8%. And obviously where my head went with that was imagine these numbers if we didn't have organisations such as Sunny Street. Um, so my challenge was I want to build these out and do more of the indicators that will come by the 31st of March. Um, but my challenge is how can Australia provide better healthcare to the vulnerable rather than we do the average person? And I sort of said that that's the sunny street vision. So we want to make these graphs that look like this where the patients seen by sunny street are lagging behind the national average and we want to push them ahead. So our vulnerable actually get the best access to healthcare because they really need it. Um, so I did some quick dodgy stats um, and said to date Sunny Street has provided the equivalent of over 100 minutes of free medical appointments, but they can do much more. Uh, that number is based on the 1,579 consults at an average GP cost for just a 10 minute consult of $85 each. Um, and then I said, you can help achieve this vision of making that dark pink circle better than the little pink circle by volunteering or donating to the organization. That's it. John, awesome. Wow, wow that was amazing. Clap, 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 virtual clap. That, that is so cool. clap. Love it. Good. Yeah, so I'd love to, basically my aim between now and the 31st of March is to go through the rest of the indicators, because as you can see, we can we know HPV immunisation from your data set. We know um, we know private health insurance. We know a lot of different information, just all in that patient data. And the great thing is that's like the standard Australian structure. So then, the amazing thing to do would be imagine if you can share those model and show that if your patients hadn't been seen by Sunny Street, what it would have done to our national averages. So I think there's a lot of really cool possibility to quantify your value um, just from that data. All oh, amazing, Shana. And you. Um, as you mentioned, we've got until the end of March. So if you're not confident with the visio done or there's a bit more work or you'll be shy, you can still put it up. You can still put it on the Google form. And then I'll, I'll compile all the links and send them to uh, the Sunny Street team. Uh, and then we can sort of debrief at the end of, of March. But thanks, amazing. It's amazing. Well done. Thank you. Cool. Next, we've got Nathan. Nathan, you're here. Um, so yeah. go. Yep. So I, I didn't research beyond the data we were given. Um, everything I thought about was self-service. Um, it'd be really nice to look at the, the full data, um, available without the privacy issues that we have. Um, that's where we can really, um, look at your, your, your patient's, um, needs. Um, so this is what I came up with. I think it's pretty basic. I didn't go into the analysis. I gave in to more self-service. So I'd like feedback, I guess. Um, it's good. It's looking good and it's useful, I think. So, so right. feedback for me is more important at this phase because working remotely, not seeing everyone's needs, um, trying to answer the questions that are presented to us. Um, I gave some alternative drill throughs, which I, I actually don't think answer your questions but I, I I just did it because I can and <laughs> to create some thought so over the next sort of two weeks it'd be nice to get some feedback and understand the key the key data you want to see on the front screen and then how do we drill down and, and, and analyze that information further to um, benefit your patients um, Hang on a second, that everything's going really slow right now. We can still see your screen, it's all good. Yep. Um, but on the, on the data analyst, like analytics side, um, I guess like, uh, I've worked for World Health Organization and understand what the issues are at the moment with an epidemic. Uh, I worked on a polio outbreak. So I don't, I don't like to 
make too much judgment um, because I'm not a professional. I'm, I'm a data guy, um, but I work with the people um, who are the professional decision makers. Um, but I did pull out some data which does discriminate, I guess. Um, drug use and drinkers. Um, so your top 10 medicines, um, you can see a huge difference here in the patterns with drug use versus drinkers. Um, anxiety, health anxiety, which are, maybe in your data mean the same thing. I don't know. Like that was the other thing is some of your indicator descriptions to me, who is not familiar with the industry, could be a data quality issue in that they mean the same thing. They need to be set up in the system and different users are entering the data in differently. Or is it just me making assumptions that are wrong? But you can see that there is a huge jump there with drug use versus drinkers for anxiety and, 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 and health anxiety. Um, and then I'm hoping through analyzing this information and drilling through, we can analyze different types of, um, um, at the moment it's, it's based off percentage, but I'd like to dig deeper into that and, and look at the quantity versus the median averages, not, 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 not just percentages for male and female, um, the breakdown of smokers. You have a lot of not recorded records, which to me is really hard to analyze when you don't record the data. Um, drinker breakdown, again, 73%. So how do you, how do you actually get an accurate um, breakdown of your, your patients when you're not recording the information. Um, and, and that was analyzing this information. That was my biggest challenge is looking at the not recorded and with, because it was such a big gap, I, I didn't want to actually look at combination really analyze it and break it down and, and try and come up with hypothesis with that, seconds, Nathan. Um, when, when it's such a, a not recorded amount of data. Um, so for me, I feel like we need to address that issue before I actually can do real analysis. Um, right now, this is a summary, but it, it, there's too much not recorded data. Um, but that's where I got to. Um, I, I, Personally, the last week for me has been too busy and I wasn't able to dig into the other um, possibilities with the other two, two projects presented to us. Great, thanks. thanks. And I think maybe um, Nova and Nat can maybe comment on the not recorded maybe at the end, because I think the, I guess we were given the data we, we had and maybe there's a point for Sunday Street to collect more data or collect data differently, I don't know. So that it might give them some ideas and so thought, foot for thoughts. Yeah, the problem with no, no recorded when it's so high, you're, you're skewing your data. Like you're not representing the real the real community um, within your um, patient records. Yeah. And if uh, I want to jump in the discussion, I might just as... jump in there. Yeah, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt either of you guys. And um, completely fair. Um, this is Nat, by the way. Um, completely fair points, um, what you're saying, Nathan, about the unrecorded data. There's a lot of reasons why a lot of it will be unrecorded, but one of the big things that we also wanted to get out of this was actually what we need to do better. So thank you. <laughs> and no any feedback like that, please um, definitely let us know in your presentation or after, because that's the stuff we want to know out of this as well. Um, yep. Things that are skewing the data and things we need to do better. Um, a big reason why a lot of the data is not recorded is because all the people who do that are volunteers so um we don't we know that we need to fine-tune our i guess training of volunteers and so, also so i've worked in a volunteer capacity before internationally and i and, and i've worked in a emergency response for a polio outbreak and i understand the the challenges there um yeah it, it's actually the the biggest challenge in all this yeah absolutely uh, and, we, and we also um 
know that for us, best practice isn't the perfect tool to be using because it doesn't quite suit the way that we run clinics. But yeah, it's all um, it's all good feedback. So um, we definitely know that that's something we need to work on. So thank you. Um, and they look great still, even though there's lots of fun um, recorded. Yeah. So thank you. And put a feedback like what on I'm showing there is um, like right now you can see mail and not recorded. And there's quite a lot not recorded just on yeah. agenda. Um, so it's really hard to understand like being gender specific on different types of diagnosis and what was what's really interesting to me like from a non practicing petition uh, like a doctor um, is there's a lot of chronic disease and mental health and depression anxiety um, in your top four and you're, you're dealing with um, quite vulnerable people but what we like Outside this, what would be really, really interesting for me is swinging that to, to people who actually have corporate jobs because um, I, I think socially, and especially with an outbreak with a, um, a virus um, at the moment, anxiety, depression, mental health, and chronic disease is has no discrimination. Um and the data I'm looking at right now is very specific to your patients. And it'd be really nice to, to correlate that to patients in the current ecosystem um, that have jobs lost you, and, the, and the people who are about to lose their jobs. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think we've lost you a bit. Uh, so uh, what I, what I, I'll, I'll recap just to, uh, hopefully I don't repeat myself. You have a lot of chronic disease, mental health, depression, anxiety. Now, these top four are actually, I don't think, uh, discriminate across anywhere in the world. And it'd be really interesting to look at the current situation with uh, coronavirus. Mm. But let's skip the coronavirus and go to corporate world people working uh, what they perceive as a normal job, there is a lot of anxiety, depression, and mental health issues in society without a national or international outbreak. And that information would be really interesting to see the difference between people who are financially um, um, suffering um, unemployed and then um, less likely to be part of the, the perceived economic, social um, economy um, and link that to people who actually have well-paid jobs because to me, I think there's not much difference in the mental health side of things. And it's quite interesting, mental health is so high in your data right now, but I don't, I, it'd be nice to look at what, what, what is mental health like to someone who actually has a job and someone who mental health for someone who's going to lose their job in the current economic circumstances. And it'd be good to look at that data and how you address that. Um, because mental, mental health is um, going to be a, a huge issue with isolation with coronavirus, people are isolated and they already have mental health issues and turning up to work as part of their community. Some great I comments, Nathan. But I a think coffee at 10 a.m. Oh, sorry. sorry, Nathan, to interrupt. I think we've gone the, the five minutes buzzer. Buzzing. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I think it's a good discussion, but I'm conscious of time and we've got a, a cure of very uh, yep. eager data um, but, but basically, um, this is a self-service dashboard and it'd be nice to have a meeting to talk about exactly um, more specific information you'd like Great. to. Yeah, let's bring that off, off site or on yeah. Slack. I think that's a good one. So, so sorry to interrupt, but I think we need to move on to uh, okay. our next. Uh, so Thank our you. next, thanks, thanks again, uh, Nathan, that was great. So next one is uh, Kelly. Kelly, you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So <laughs> don't see your screen yet. 
Yes, no, I know. Hang on, let me give me two seconds. Tick, all right. Tick, tick, tick. Uh, right. All right. Done. Yeah, we okay, see your cool. screen now. Okay. All right. So, um, I guess just a little bit about the design. I um, probably did did what everybody does and start. I started off with something really complex, and then I spent too much time mucking around with that rather than the data. So, um, I ended up finding you know some uh, nice. Uh, background here that I think um, Sunny Street use already uh, in um, in their uh, their branding. So basically, what I did was I focused on the campfire uh, data, and uh, as, as I started to delve into that, I, I started to think about um, the welfare of the volunteers. Um, so I just ended up with something. Uh, I guess it's a little basic here, but um, just to to sort of how, how can we look after our volunteers maybe and, and where our workforce is and um, how can we su support them. So uh, but initially uh, we've got here, how many co consultations did we do? And I guess by type, um, oh, sorry, my screen. Okay. Um, so overall and then how, how safe we felt. So I guess we, we felt safe most of the time uh, and mostly safe and then um, I guess there were just a few incidences there where we didn't actually feel safe uh, during our shift. Uh, I then focused on you know how, how long are our shifts you know what's our, our what's our shift time we can see here that mainly our shifts are around um, three two to three hours uh, with the exception of that one there so that really stands out um, that we did there at Maruchidor. Um, a 14 and a half hour shift. So I'm not sure what happened on that day. And then I started to think about um, the people that we didn't get to see. Um, so I guess building on Jason, what you were sort of delving into there about looking at also the length of the shift. So, um, and as expected, what, what I would see was that one there at Wesley Mission, as Jason had already pointed out, um, where we turned away eight people, but then we look at the length of the shift and it was less than one hour. So to me, um, I'd like to delve deeper into why that was. Uh, did something happen that we couldn't continue with the shift? Um, did a major incident occur that was, um, you know, that, that stopped us from seeing those people? So um, that sort of became very apparent. And obviously with a very long shift, we didn't turn anybody away. So, um, yeah, these outliers here, I'd probably want to delve into a little bit more like, you know, this one and this one to try and understand why. And then, of course, down the bottom here, when are we the busiest? So then we can maybe plan our workforce and, and when we, we need more volunteers. So I guess around that October, November uh, space there. So what I... Um, just a couple of filters here. So if we want to look at a particular service, so say we're going to head out to, um, I don't know, maybe here, Marucci Neighbourhood, Neighbourhood Centre. Um, what does it look like on, when we do a shift there? Um, you know, okay, we, we need, you know, our nursing paramedic consults. I'm not sure how that differs from nurse practitioner, but um, if it's a different type of service that we, we offer, um, or volunteer, uh, we may need to, you know, head that up there. Um, it's it's relatively safe out at that that location, uh, and then how long are our shifts there, and um, are we able to see everybody? Generally, yes, we are. And again, that same trend of of when we're the busiest. Um, so yeah, so I guess for uh, each of our you know, locations, you can, you know, maybe out at Ipswich, how are we looking out there? Um, our longer shift there is about three and a quarter hours, etc. We feel pretty safe out there and, yeah, that kind of thing. So mine's pretty short and sweet, I guess. I, I paired it all back to the, um, the basics and um, I guess I hope in the next couple of weeks maybe I'll work some more on some of those other complex, you know, headed down the mapping route as well. Um, you know, maybe I might be able to, you know, sort of add, add more to this. Uh, and again, I guess there's a little donate button that goes straight to the, the GoFundMe page, um, as we see there, so people can donate so directly from it. Go and donate. I think yes. that's a tech, tech as well. And go and volunteer. I think your, 
Uh, Nova, you're looking for volunteers, are you? As well? Always? Oh, vol volunteers, yep. Okay. Yes, we're definitely always looking for volunteers and also people who want to go and take stats. Like stat keepers on the iPad, is that, is that what it means? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, so you... Nat's been working with the um, the public health students at the local uni to see if they want to come and do some project work um, to basically uh, the main data point they'd be collecting is all of the tandem, you know, the cognium tandem data around the what's going on within the conversations. Um, but yeah, and then obviously we always need, always need volunteers. Um, it's really interesting, Kelly, that you just um, a focus on the volunteers. I absolutely love that. I just got a call from volunteers at, at our clinic who have been really upset tonight by um, a suicidal patient. So this yeah. is this is this is really real. And I just can't believe that I came back and logged back in to to hear the talk. And you're talking about our volunteers. And yeah, so I really appreciate that focus. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome work, Kelly, as well. Uh, yeah, we have to remember much. all those uh, numbers are people at the end. Yes. Yeah. Uh, talking about tandem, I think Robert joined. Uh, I think I saw his name on Zoom, so I don't. Know. Yeah, Robert, I'm, here. I'm did... just muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep muting. Uh, so, do you want to, did you want to present as well, Rob? Yeah, sure. Whenever you're ready. So yeah, you were the first one on the line, but uh, I think you were a bit late, so I'm shaming you. But uh, you got uh, if you want to uh, take the floor, and you got Fabius to uh, show us your stuff. Yeah, sure. Let me see if I can. So mine is actually in tandem, um, the software that we use to do this. So cool. give me one second and I'll bring it up here. So just in case people out uh, there want to volunteer and they kind of want to know exactly what we're looking That's for. It. We see your screen now. All right, you see graphs, you see my email. Yeah, yeah, that amazing yeah. pie chart. Cool. Um, so what we did is, um, this is software that helps with data collection, which sometimes is a little bit hard to get information, like what is the conversations that are being had, what is the topics, and um, just in the, the layout of the mobile clinics, like how many people are doing social interactivities, how many are visiting with the nurse or clinician, um, it can be kind of hard to get that information simply from the medical record. So that's why we need some people to kind of help go out and collect data. This is some of the stuff that we've been able to start tracking, um, like social interaction time. How much are they actually sitting there at the, the activity stations? Like, are they playing games? Are they um, talking about housing or doing personal history? Are we talking about coping strategies? And this is more like the therapy, sitting down with people just having conversations. So overall, the biggest conversation that we could see was um, housing, personal history, and um, social relationships. So those are almost a quarter each of what people are the most concerned about, what the topics of the conversations usually are centered around. Uh, then we also went through and looked at, um, for one particular location, we just averaged the nurse practitioner. What do they end up spending most of the time on? Um, and the vast majority of it's just health literacy and education. So telling people kind of what they needed to, to work on or, you know, educating about hygiene and those types of things. And then um, just regular conversations with the nurse. Those were the big two um, that we constantly see come up with the average medical visit in terms of minutes per session. Um, and then we went into their social history investigations, like when we're asking exactly what's going wrong with their social backgrounds and where are they the most frustrated, they often show domestic violence as the number one. Um, their relationships are number two and drugs and alcohol are number three. Um, so we broke that apart just to kind of give you where the focus of their concerns have been at this one location. Um, and then the nurse practitioner breakdown for the entirety of all sessions um, you can say it's still relationships, preventative health, and um, housing. Like it keeps coming up as those are repeat things that they talk about. But also, I think this one was uh, nurse conversations, and the last one was where's this one? It's, uh, health literacy. Yeah. So just doing education on health. Um, so that was the breakdown of one nurse's experience. And then we took that into a Pareto chart and said, well, 
we look at percentage of time spent across each area, um, roughly 18% is on education and about 37% is just conversations with the nurse. So this was just a real basic way of us throwing together some um, visuals to see where the time is spent the most. And yeah, education and nurse conversations is where it goes most of the time. Um, and then we just uh, broke this apart by social interactions. So what are they doing for coping strategies, future planning, um, hobbies and interests? And we could kind of see what were the conversations we're spending the most time. On this one, we could see it was um, overall was housing and um, just having a personal story and chat about where they are, uh, followed up with like the relationships and stuff. So those are the biggest ones that we saw. I'll show you real quick how this is done. Just so if you do want to volunteer um, and go up with um, Sunny Street and participate, um, this is how it works. Basically, um, Natalie helped us build this out, but she's got a um, app that's basically generated off of all of this uh, data that she puts in. So as you stand there with the tablet or your mobile phone, all you have to do is click on the buttons that have the correct meaning. So if there's a nurse having a conversation and they're talking about health literacy, then you just tap on and it will create um, those timings automatically for you to send back to us. Um, and then our graphs that you saw, they're just automatically populate as you're creating the data. Um, so it could definitely use some volunteers to help us collect that because it is a little bit more time consuming and uh, a little bit more manual driven to get that kind of rich data that we need from the qualitative aspect, not just quantitative, like what are the experiences and things that we see. And yeah, hopefully this has helped a little bit, but um, yeah, we're definitely getting a lot more data um, that, that helps us in that way. So any questions so far? Thanks, Robert. I think it's useful for, for us to see what tool generated the data we were provided. So it's interesting, very fascinating. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, maybe we keep questions at the, at the end. If yeah, people sure. have questions and the, the participants. Uh, so I'm just conscious of time, so I don't want to uh, finish at o'clock. I mean, we could, but I don't mind. We could talk forever. Uh, next one online, we've got uh, Yug. Hug or whatever you you say your first name. Sorry, me not speak English. Hug, Hug. Oh, good evening. It's Hugh. Hugh. <laughs> no, I get it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just sharing my screen now. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I'm the co-founder co of a tech startup called Medically, and uh, we're trying to help improve access to medication. Um, and I was working with Aaron, who works with Queensland Health as a clinical um, pharmacist. So. First, I have to apologize. We've had a lot of unexpected events over the last week, so we weren't able to dive deep into the data. So mostly what we'll be presenting are, um, is pretty much how we, we planned um, our approach to the data and also a number of recommendations. Ooh, trying to go to the next page. It's not, okay. Um, so firstly, for dashboard, so we both have quite a bit of experience with um, business improvement and the one trap we see quite often is organizations build um, very large complex dashboards with a lot of information. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of that information doesn't actually drive change in the organization. Um, so we wanted to ensure that if we were going to present data, um, it would be very clear for employees or staff of the organization that say if a chart or a widget went up, it would be very clear what action would need to be taken. If that value went down, it would be very clear what action needs to be taken. Um, so there was a large number of questions asked by Sunny Street. Um, so we thought we'd dissect them into a few um, groups of stakeholders. Um, so first stakeholder group are sponsors and donors. So we believe they would require a, a very emotive uh, story, something that's easily understandable and shareable. Um, and the next group was uh, for Sunny Street themselves. So an internal dashboard uh, the intention of that would be to drive organizational improvement. And finally, a very high level uh, data set for government. So that's about um, demonstrating public health outcomes. Um, so this could be an example of um, something to share with uh, donors. So just very high level information. Um, so I won't jump into it too much. 
um, like some of the other groups, um, when it came to looking at how um, or measuring potentially how Sunny Street is performing, um, we wanted to look into um, get some external information. So first, we wanted to understand what are the needs in the community. Um, so I saw Tony and some of the other people had some great information, which was by Primary Health Network. Uh, we only looked at had time to look at the census, uh, which were, covered the state. The only thing that really jumped out to us is the age of the clients in Sunny Street. Um, so we noticed that there was heavily skewed towards the 35s and over. So there's quite a lot of homelessness um, in the mid 20s and even in the under 12 year old range, which um, aren't coming to Sunny Street. And that might not necessarily be bad. It might be a geographical issue or it might be an issue of um, maybe their couch surfers rather than people um, I guess, sleeping hard. Um, then I guess, you know, you can send out a lot of volunteers who have great intentions, but I guess the question we would have is, do those people have the right skills based on the, uh, the demand that's coming from the community? So as a lot of people have raised, there's a lot of people with mental, a lot of the clients have mental health issues or chronic disease. Um, so we had a few recommendations. So our first recommendation is um, there's a lot of diagnosis information, but unfortunately there's no dates against it. Um, so it's kind of hard to understand when the demand is required for certain skill sets. Um, so another suggestion would be to create volunteer profiles. I know it's quite difficult and I'm sure you appreciate every volunteer that comes along. It would always be good to try and match volunteers to certain peak times so you might find that there's certain peak times when people present with say depression and so it's always good to match those volunteers to the demand in the community um so we also made a suggestion um to extend the shifts log so there's information there around um so high level information that people get turned away so a few people have raised it would be good to have a understanding of why those people are getting turned away but another i guess thing that jumped out to us is are any patients, are there any other gaps? So are any patients getting partially treated? So maybe there's a diagnosis that requires a vaccination and a medication. And is that patient potentially only receiving part of their treatment? Uh, 30 seconds left you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and so the other piece of information was based on the demographics. Um, you know, we just thought about sexual health, um, whether there's any help uh, for that. Um, and one recommendation is um, to use SNOMED um, te terminology in order to define um, the recordings. And for the public health, um, we've just got a very high level recommendation, which is to measure patient improvement. So if you're able to take a baseline measurement when patients come in, so see how often they're presenting to emergency departments. And for specific conditions, um, there's tools available in order to measure improvement. Um, so whether that's around distress or mental health. So we've just got a few um, suggestions down below about tools that can be used to measure patient improvement. And we've just provided some of our contact details if you want any uh, further information. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Thanks, thanks Tim. Uh, and I know Harun from Queen's Health, I've worked with you a bit. Uh, thanks, great, that's great. So I think they, they will be offline discussion, I'm sure. Thanks again. Yeah, I'm trying to look at how to unshare, but... Uh... Uh, I think I can maybe on share you. That's it. So next we've got on track presenting. Hello. You are you, yep, you're online. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear oh. you. So now if you share your screen please. Yes. Yeah. And then that's it, it's starting. Yep. Cool. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrak. Um, this dashboard is to help the Sunny Street uh, organization to, to call all the recruiters and volunteers to their organization and also encourage the other people to donate to the organization. Um, by doing this visualization, I, I'm trying to make people understand what really Sunny Street volunteers are doing when they are doing their job 
and how that volunteers are making great impact on those people who need help most. Um, in this visualization, um, I'm showing um, how many people that the that Sunny Street reached to and what health issues they had and uh, the help from them and what advice what advice people were seeking from the Sunny Street and where the volunteers work with mostly. Uh, if we have a look at the data, um, Sunny Street's help reached to around 600 people in Australia, mostly in Brisbane and Gold Coast area. And um, those people were looking for mostly just warm conversation um, with, from the volunteers. And also one great thing is that um, in the volunteers working at the Sunny, sunny Street is, is just preventing the suicides um, that is the one great thing, and um, and also on the on the left hand side, um, I listed the all the health issues that people that the patients had. Um, the most common one was uh, chronic disease, and the least uh, common was atrial fibrillation. And also, I want to let you know that I am not from the health health industry. So um, I'm trying to make my best to visualize the data. And yet, yeah, in a, in a nutshell, um, I encourage the people to volunteer or donate to make great happen in this people's life. So they can click here, uh, just signing up for volunteering or donate. So uh, that's it. Thank you. And, so, and you said you were a student. Yes, that right? I am a student, yes. And so well, well done. Sorry? That, yeah, I'm saying well done. Congratulations okay. to come up with something like this. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and hopefully it, it helps a little bit for the Sunny Street activities, yes. I'm sure it will. And if you put the link on the, on the Slack and want people to give feedback as well, I'm sure people will be happy to give you feedback as well. Same okay. for everyone, I guess. Yeah, I am happy to hear uh, yeah, feedback from anyone. So yeah, that would good. be good uh, learning. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks again. Uh, I'm just speeding up a bit. Uh, next, we've got uh, Kim Kidata team or Team Kidata. So I, I don't know who from Kidata is going to present. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm assuming. Yes, yeah. I, I'm assuming that that's me. Uh, so Wilta here. Um, Wilta. From Kidata. Yeah, that's it. So, and, um, hang on, you need to share your screen. I need to share my screen. Where is the screen again? See the bottom of the... Yes, the green one at the bottom. I've yeah. got this one. Oh, I have to pick the screen. You pick your screen or your browser and then you will see your screen. Yes. It's coming up. Me, yeah, that's it. Let me know when you see up. it. Yeah, yeah. All oh, good. So you got five minutes. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, so um, I'm Wilta and I'm a junior analyst. Just started at key data. And so, yeah, this has been a really good project for me to um, learn alongside Devin and Visa, um, who are also working on this. Uh, so just a, um, before I um, um, just go down in detail, a quick overview is um, here at the top, we're looking at the number of visits um, per patient. And, um, and so that's break, broken up into a couple of different categories here. So we um, have it broken up into quarters um, and then also into gender. And these percentages are um, a, a percentage of the total in each category. Um, so that's gender here. We've got Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander status and age um, uh, categories. Um, and then also here, um, allowing the, um, the person viewing this to choose what they want to view. Uh, then we have also um, a percentage of the total amount of prescriptions in their different categories here. And also the diagnosis um, for the, uh, the different diagnosis indicators. Um, and then um, below here, um, we have looked uh, the number of patients this time. So this time, not the number of visits, but uh, patients. 
um, individual patients, and that's broken up into different age categories. Um, and then below, um, this is kind of separate from the from a different data set, but we have the, the shift measures. So um, on the left, we can sort of choose uh, which region we want to be looking at. Um, and then we can um, have that divided into the percentage of shifts that were in these different areas. Um, so we have the, the night cafe in Brisbane and then uh, the Maruchi neighborhood center in the Sunshine Coast. Um, and then also the safety, shift safety level um, data here. So like someone else also said, mostly um, quite safe, it looks like. Um, and then just going in a little bit more detail here, um, it's been set up here so you can have a closer look, uh, splitting things up into different quarters specifically. So in this quarter, there were uh, 590 distinct visits um, from patients. Um, and then we can see, you know, within the, um, within gender, we have 20% uh, may, of males um, having visited in quarter four, in the fourth quarter. Um, and then that splits it up into all these different categories. And then also, um, this is, it's sort of nice that we can then look at uh, specific things here that we want to look at. Um, so we can look at the males um, and look at how that affects. So, so the males break down the drug use uh, status. Um, so 89% of the male visits are not and not um, active abuse uh, in that in that category. Um, and then that also filters through these guys here. So we'll see here that um, in the age category, 40 to 49 years old, there were 75 male patients um, there. And so that makes up 23% of the total patients. Um, and, uh, and then at the top here, um, there are some general statistics. Um, and then the GoFundMe link um, along with some information um, here. This is from the What We Do uh, brochure on the Sunny Street website. And um, yeah, so hopefully this is helpful to, um, to Sunny Street and also hopefully it makes it sort of clear for other people looking into what Sunny Street's doing because they're doing some pretty good stuff. So um, cool. yeah, I, I guess that's it. Thanks, Rachel. And you say you're a junior data scientist, so you just started to use Tableau, have you? Yes. Uh, yes, and I forgot to mention this is done on Tableau. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's that's pretty nice. And yes, um, I awesome. have started recently. Thank you. Um, next on, on in the line, we've got I thought, uh, Liam. Are you sure. there, Liam? Liam? Are you still there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you want? Did you want to show your your screen on your what you've done with your analysis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. So I will just uh, share my screen now. So hopefully you can all see this. And also explain uh, what, you, what you use, which tool to use, and that kind yeah, of yeah. So um, <coughs> my background is as a uh, statistics. Um, yeah, I was. I was eating chips. Uh, <laughs> oh, pizza be delivered to you. What flavor? <laughs> uh, honey soy chicken chips. Yeah. Um, anyway, getting back to it. Um, hopefully, you can see uh, my R Studio. Um, no, yet. So we can see you, but not the screen yet. Not the screen. No. Mm, share. Now it's coming oh. up. Oh, yeah. that's better. Okay, good. Um, uh, so my background is that I'm a statistician and I was trying to think of a way um, how can I take the data that uh, Sunny Street has provided to us and make some really interesting inferences from the data set. So what I, what I thought of doing was basically building a, uh, a regression model, a Bayesian regression model, and trying to f tease out information regarding um, the types of people that come to uh, clinics and what um, types of uh, diagnoses um, are most commonly prescribed certain groups 
and demographics. So that's essentially what I have done here. So uh, I've set up my first Bayesian model here. So this is my Bayesian model. I'm doing a logistic uh, Bernoulli regression. I'm finding out uh, the diagnosis chronic disease across a variety of um, demographic information. So once I run this model, I'm able to find out um, how different demographics are affected or affect how um, this diagnosis uh, occurs. So with uh, chronic disease, so as you can see, as age increases, so does the likelihood of that person being diagnosed with chronic disease. And you can see that we've got 95% confidence intervals here. We also have a look at gender, so male and female, are fairly similar. Male is slightly higher, but I wouldn't say it's significantly. The indigenous versus non-indigenous, um, they're fairly similar uh, across homeless populations. And then, of course, we've got the knowns. So I've just decided to model them separately. Um, over the quarters, across the year, it seems to be fairly consistent, so there's no real outliers there. Uh, alcohol consumption, um, so there's really, probably due to the sparsity of this data, um, it's fairly consistent across um, uh, different rates of alcohol uh, consumption. Another interesting data set is the allergy count, um, which I, um, I'm probably going to have to get a bit more help from the people collecting the data as to what allergy count um, Lex, but it seems that as your allergy uh, counts get over uh, between over one, essentially, your percent chance of being diagnosed uh, with a chronic disease. And then my last, uh, well, one of my last stats was uh, whether you're a pensioner or not, and being a pensioner, as I guess we saw with uh, the age demographics, is that the higher your if you're a pensioner, you're more likely to be diagnosed with a chronic disease. And then I've also modeled uh, interaction effects. So um, bear with me here. So this red line represents male as age increases and this green line represents female as age increases. And what you can see is that earlier on, there's quite a wide gap between the male and female uh, diagnosis population, but as the ages can all uh, increase, we can see that they really start to come together. So there's an interaction we can see there that as you switch from uh, male to female, in terms of the person you're looking at, you get different uh, diagnoses. We can also have a look at the indigenous versus non-indigenous, and you can see as at young ages, they're fairly similar, but as uh, they uh, get over 50 plus, we see indigenous starts to become more prevalent. And I've also done uh, a little uh, whisker plot here, um, which really just shows that um, there's really no difference between uh, the Indigenous and non-Indigenous uh, people when it comes to chronic disease. And so that's kind of the initial overview. And what I was initially going to do is put this into a massive uh, dashboard where you can select uh, a visualisation select a parameter you want to estimate. So I've done an example of that. So I've diagnosed mental health here, and we can see how mental health changes over age and gender. So you can see that females are really uh, quite rarely diagnosed with mental health at, uh, at young ages, but uh, quite highly diagnosed at older, uh, older ages compared to males, which start off really highly likely compared to when they're older. So that's a really interesting uh, interaction coefficient there. Uh, and we can see there's a small difference between Indigenous and non-Indigenous. And other, so that's, that's essentially it. I've used Bayesian statistics um, to tease out information uh, between demographics in regards to a, uh, an event, in this case, being diagnosed with a certain type of uh, I don't know. Thank you.
great. That's, that's really amazing, Liam. Uh, it's, and it's very different from the other stuff. So I can't wait to see maybe the, when you got the dashboard at the end and you can share that on Slack for people to uh, read a bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, glad you like Thanks it. Again. <laughs> Thanks again. Yeah, we liked it. I don't know about the others, but uh, I found that fascinating. Uh, we get close to the end. So I think we've got um, uh, Marco was meant to, um, to present. He's, uh, he was aware with uh, kids' commitment. He's, he's back on, online, but uh, he said, Marco, you're listening. You're online. Hey, Fred. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marco Motta. I work at the Department of Transport and Main Roads as a, um, as a principal analyst. Um, I, I guess I was really excited to work on this because I, I thought, uh, well, one of, my, one of the things that I really love is to use data to, um, to help with, um, with um, insights that um, support good decisions that help the community. So I thought that Sunny Street was a really good cause and, um, and hopefully I, we, we can help them uh, with, with the data. Um, I, um, the, the, main, the main things that I wanted to do in this visualization is quite simple. I just wanted to focus on the, um, whether Sunny Street uh, was, was using their resources um, in the locations that were gonna give them the best bang for buck, I guess. Um, the, in particular, I, I mashed a couple of data sources. One was their campfire shift measure, just to look at how many, um, how many interactions they had with, with the people that were coming in, uh, what type of interactions they were, etc. And I then kind of located them in, um, in this on, on the map. Uh, and then I used ABS data from census uh, 2016 to look at the percentage of homeless people, or the incidence of homelessness in, in, in different suburbs. Um, obviously census data is a bit limited in terms of like trying to capture homeless people with census is a bit of a, it was a bit of a contradiction, but ABS has done a fairly good job of trying to identify where people, you know, where homeless people may be located. So um, I, I thought the data set was good enough to, to try this. Um, I'll probably I won't talk too much about the different metrics. There's um, the main one I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on is the incidence, which is like the percentage of of homeless people uh, per um, compared to the rest of the population of that area, just to try and normalize the numbers a little bit. Um, in particular, we can start by having a look at the area where Sunny Street is kind of operating. Um, so that the in particular, the Sunshine Coast, you can see how Maruchido has got quite a few number of interactions there. So about 871 interactions from the data. Um, and, uh, but as you can see, the incidence of homelessness is not huge. So it's about 0.48% for the total population. So there's about 300 homeless people in, located in that area, according to census. However, there's a couple of other areas, in particular Nambo, but also Caloundra, um, which has quite a few um, pe homeless people in, in that area, especially in Nambour where about more than half is sleeping rough. Uh, and you can see how Sunny Street has got a couple of, um, uh, a couple of service centers, there are two or three service centers there with quite a few numbers. So obviously they're covering the Sunshine Coast quite well and Maruchidor is, is a good spot uh, because um, if, I guess it's well connected to all the rest of the Sunshine Coast. So that, that's probably uh, an area that is well served and, and it, it provides good value. And, and it might also provide some values for all the, these people that come from um, Gympie up here. This area is quite huge, so even uh, it, it would be very hard to cover, even though there's quite, there's quite a bit of incidence there. Um, and as well, you know, all the, the more regional you go, the more incidence there is. So um, even though the area is bigger, so it is harder to cover. One, if you go, if we go going a little bit south, in particular, Kabucha stood out a little bit for me. There's about 1.2% of homeless people um, for the total population. It's about 847 in total there. Most of them sleeping in temporary accommodations, but still potentially there may be opportunity there for Sunny Street to have some additional resources deployed there. I don't know whether that's possible, but um, I guess the point being that there, is, there could be some demand there. Um, especially because people from Kabucha may not necessarily be able to travel um, to Maruchidor, even though there's a train line, like um, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not extremely close. Um, the other area where Sunny Street is doing, um, 
it, it's obviously located is quite significantly and having a lot of interaction is the Brisbane CBD. Um, obviously, there's a good demand. There's a big demand there. Homeless population is about 2,600 there um, for that all um, kind of South Brisbane, Brisbane CBD, the valley. Um, and that's about 3.5% of the population. So obviously, Brisbane CBD is a particularly... Um, important spot although it should be noted that quite a lot of people are sleeping in temporary accommodations there so um, as opposed to um, sleeping rough uh, you, what's that 30 seconds. that was a timer 30 oh, seconds sorry um, the other area that I just wanted to um, to draw attention is Kingston same situation where you've got quite a few um, quite a few people in Springwood Kingston um, and the other, and potentially like you could capture a lot of the Logan area. And then the Gold Coast, even though the numbers are not huge, they're still quite significant. And a lot of them, especially in, um, in um, Surface Paradise, are sleeping rough. So th there are good opportunities there and the area is quite compact. So you could capture quite a lot of them in, with, with, a, with a one location. That's all. Thank you very much. Great, Marco. And you did well. No kids. Thank you, Marco. That was amazing. Thanks. I hope cool. you can use that. If there's any oh. questions, happy to answer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We'll, I'll, I'll be in touch. No worries. Did I, from the 30 people who got online, did I miss anyone? Did, is there someone that wants to talk uh, or present? And then we can start the q and I don't know if I've missed anyone. Uh, if not, we can maybe have a webcam and microphone on and we can ask questions, so if Nova asks questions, uh, and Natalie, and then have a bit of a chat for a few minutes until uh, maybe seven o'clock, as that. I'm leaving that to the floor. Perfect, that sounds great. Cool. <coughs> All right, Natty, you got some questions? You are the data person, I'm just the doctor. <laughs> um. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. First of all, just thank you so much to everybody who did anything. Uh, that was so interesting and such a range of things that people um, focused on, which is really cool. Um, oh, questions. I did write a few things down. Also, maybe before you get your questions, I'd be, I'd be keen to get some feedback. So if everyone in the audience could maybe uh, in the chat, I was I was hoping to do a poll and uh, it doesn't work. So my first question would have been, did you find that even useful? So I would just ask for yes, no, um, <clears throat> or oh, NA. So if you guys are, I think it was good uh, and you would want to participate again, uh, send me some feedback in the chat. You can have a private chat if it's negative feedback, I don't mind, but... Uh, I'm, I'm quite Predid. interested to see if it's uh, useful or not. Hey, Fred, it's Dave Keys here. I, I was just going to say the variety is where so much of the value comes from. Some of the work that's been going on, you can see that um, it'll be amazing what people do after seeing each other's work and how they modify what they've already done. I'd that's, see the stuff in round two. Fantastic yeah. stuff here. Yeah. So I guess round two would be uh, putting your, your vis on, on Slack get some feedback and then modifying your Vs and then for for the Senate Street people, uh, the crew to just uh, ask more questions and work offline if you want. So the floor is yours, everyone. We've got until seven o'clock until the light turns off here. I'm not sure. I'm the only one left in your office. <laughs> So now, do you have any questions or comments? Um, I just wanted to say um, as well that I uh, love that everyone uses Sunny Street colours. And, um, <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, I would probably have to go back and look at the presentation or look more at the like maps and things like that for specific questions. But if everyone is happy for me to get in touch with you after and sort of say, can we use this? Can we use it for this? Um, or you know, um, ask more questions, that would be awesome. Okay. And it, also, sorry, um, Nat, you, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Do you want to do like a, a quick one hour follow up end of March where you got time yes. to uh, digest all of these and ask questions? I, I, I said that for everyone. You guys is a good idea? I'd love to. I'd love that. That would be great. Like a, a quick one hour Q&A at the end, end yep. of March-ish. Yep. 
That's a great idea. Cool. So I think there's no pressure. You can, I mean, if you're all tired and you're cooking your pizza, because we don't <laughs> get pizza from Kidara anymore. Mm. Uh, uh, so I would encourage everyone to put their vids on or their work on, on the Slack channel. I think there's a special channel for that. And then uh, uh, Nat and, and Nova can have a look and then digest them and maybe ask questions. And yeah, you, have, you have been, um, Adam, Adam, hey, you, you've been recording, right? Yeah, 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 I'm recording. Oh, you sound right. French, Adam. So hopefully, hey, what was that? You sound French. <laughs> what are you talking Hi. about? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Adam. Hey, hey, Kelly. Good to see you. Um, okay. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that was, that was really a uh, really good event. But congrats on the organization. Thanks, Kyle, for um, helping as well with that um despite yeah it would have been good to meet all face to face um but yeah unfortunately that wasn't possible hopefully soon um, something yeah, happened I was, I was very impressed by the the quality and the, the variety as, as dave said that's really good and uh what if you can share the recording after that um frederick this this will be good because i think this will allow the allow um uh, send the street team to be able to sort of go back and yeah, then we can probably channel and help with yourself um, channel some of the feedback and the questions that may come. Um, it'd be good to um, a lot of a lot of a lot of this as well is sort of relying on the numbers being really accurate. So um, whatever we whatever conclusions we draw or we sort of. We're gonna to have to double check all of this, and uh, you're yeah, quite happy to continue helping in that in that space. Obviously, I'm sure there's more data that probably came through as well since, because there's been a um, few weeks coming through, and mm. uh, the impact of I guess the coronavirus will be quite um, interesting to see as well, because yeah, we don't really know what's gonna happen. So it'd be good to, if you can, in the next few weeks, sort of get a refresher of the data, maybe. Yep. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. And um, we're looking at the possibility of starting virtual clinics as well and watching the impact of what's going to happen with COVID-19. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it, we're just so excited to have this relationship and keen to keep working um, with you especially. But obviously anyone who's been part of this process, we're just so, so grateful and, uh, yeah, can't wait to see where it takes us all. Yeah, and... Um, just to follow up from that as well with the Q&A and the Slack channel and stuff, if anyone has any feedback on things that we're really missing or like sort of, I mean, it's pro you probably need to know a little bit more about the tools that we use. So maybe that would be a useful thing um, for people who want to continue doing stuff of what, what we actually use to capture the data. But if, you, if anyone has any feedback on what we are missing or what we should be doing better, like what... Um, I think Nathan was it that gave us some really good feedback on the best practice stuff. Um, if you have anything like that, feel free to put that in the Slack or bring it to the Q and A as well. It's super useful for us to know what we can be doing better, and you guys probably know that a lot better than us. So yeah, absolutely. Shana here. I have some feedback for you guys, which is yes. you're doing an amazing job. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Let us help you with the data, but you guys just focus on what you do. It's really amazing. Oh, Shana, I, <laughs> I've just written down, I quoted you, I've written down, imagine if we didn't have Sunny Street. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, just, I just loved your whole, your whole approach to it because this is, this is big and um, yeah, and I, I just uh, really, really appreciated your, your view of looking at it from a national impact, you know, side of things. And I can't wait to yeah. see how she get up to before the 31st yeah, of March. Yeah, I genuinely mean it. It's important. Thank yeah, <laughs> no pressure, but it is amazing. So exactly that. Imagine if we didn't have you guys. There's plenty of people that know how to use data. There's not many people like you guys in the world. We need more. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anna. Yeah, I agree more. I just want to say one thing as well. Frederick, we didn't see you presenting your viz. Oh, I yeah. was just about to say that as well. <laughs> I forgot. I actually forgot. <laughs> so I need to go to bed now. I'm in pyjamas. <laughs> But, yeah. That's the encore. Do you want me to show it quickly? Okay? I reckon that was good. Yeah. Hang on. I actually yeah. forgot about it. You've got, se you've got seven minutes, Frederick. Who <laughs> <laughs> is going to shut down and the, the light is going to shut down. Hang on. Um, so we, uh, I'll also send you an email as I can talk. I might just refresh it. Uh, I'll send you an email uh, to you so we can schedule a time as well for end of March so we can go through the Q&A session. So I don't mind in Tableau, uh, 
bit disclaimer, I'm not a data analyst. I just love using Tableau, but uh, in my own time, in the morning or late at night, especially in the morning, I do Tableau in my pajamas. Uh, so I think that was an awesome uh, project. Uh, I'm very proud of all the community uh, that was involved. Anyway, um, so I've got a few charts and uh, I was quite amazed to see how rich that I was. And uh, you've only been in existence for two years, not even, 18 months, I believe. So I think there's a lot of rich data. Uh, the thing that comes across when you look at your social web website, Twitter, is the, the kindness, the discussion-based, uh, healthcare, the, uh, the social elements. And I just wanted to, uh, I guess, not put you in a spot, but check that the, the data that was collected uh, uh, reflects that. And then, so the first chart was using tandem data. And then you can see that uh, in terms of service provided, you're very social. So I think that's a good, um, good tick that you're, you walk in the talk, uh, that's, that's amazing. I'm also noticing that they got a lot of tech issues, not a lot, but a bit of tech issues. So that would be interesting to, um, to find out why, provided that that data was only uh, two days, I think, of, of capture. So if you start to capture more data and you got more tech issues, uh, you might want to um, improve those tech issues. I'm not too sure. Yeah, that, that, that feels about right, Eric. <laughs> 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 and maybe you could be more efficient and I don't know, use different devices or I don't know, better training, I'm not sure. Uh, the next chart was looking at the number of days between visits. Uh, because I, I'm not too sure about the diet itself, I made a lot of assumptions, but uh, what I've developed is a bit of a slider. You could see the, the, the different time where people came back. So from uh, one, even zero um, to 400 days. And what I've sort of noticed, and I could be I could be wrong because I need to spend more time analyzing the data, but uh, uh, I've sort of covered the uh, the high risk type of um, patient, which are the mental health, and I've grouped those conditions. Uh, and you can see that um, for some reason I've got, I've got issues with the slider, but uh, there's a lot of people with uh, mental health issues that are. Uh, uh, not coming back very often to the clinic. So I don't know if it's uh, on purpose. I don't know if those people uh, travel or, uh, but may, they might be upon it to maybe uh, uh, see them more often. I'm not so sure, but I thought it was quite interesting insight. Uh, for example, some people are between two days are spending 300 days without seeing you. So I don't know why. Is there maybe a way you could uh, uh, see them more often? I'm not sure, especially if they're in the mental health kind of categories. Um, the, and the next, the next chart was about uh, shifts and the concentrations. Um, so the colors mean the, the location. Um, what I found interesting in that, uh, in, in those um, uh, concentrations, uh, one number of patients turned away, uh, which I think a few of you have already notified, uh, provided the data is not uh, 100% accurate, so you have to be treated carefully. But uh, 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 what was interesting is that on that day, 19 of uh, November in, uh, in Brisbane, in those locations, there were quite a, a big number of patients that were turned away. So I'm not sure, if, is it because there were safety issues? Is it because you only stayed uh, only an hour or something? I'm not sure, but I think that was quite interesting to uh, uh, maybe dive a bit more in that kind of uh, insight. And as it refreshes, um, and those were sort of interesting insights, as you can see the, uh, the bigger bars, uh, for example, 144 concentration happened on that day, the 14th of October. So you either were very busy or you seeing the patient very quickly or you had more people on, on shift. So I thought that was an interesting insight on, on that specific day. Uh, there was a big spike of uh, conversations. So I don't know if they were a real conversation or maybe a, a typo in the data, but I thought it was quite interesting. And I think that's, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, but that was me. Uh, what was interesting with that is you could, um, you, the data is quite rich, so you can spend hours and hours and then um, spend more time and finding more insights. So that was, that was me. And I already forgot about what I was talking about. So that was about you guys, not me. Um, do, we've got more questions, more time for, for questions. I'm happy to open the floor for a few minutes left. Um, if, if people want to uh, 
or maybe Nova, if you want to maybe wrap up. So uh, we agreed that we meet again on, on Zoom and end of March. We do a bit of a QA. So we, we share the video files and I share all the, uh, the links. People can yeah. put their views on Slack and you can have a, have a look at them and then we continue the discussion. Yeah, look, I think this is just the start. This is the start of a discussion. And um, I just, yeah, the hours of work that have gone in, even if it is in your pyjamas in the middle of the night, Frederick, I think you need to see a doctor. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, look, it's, it's, I, I have to process all of this, to be honest. I've had my mind blown. This is a whole other world. Um, and uh, I'm just in incredibly grateful. I appreciate uh, your commitment uh vanitha for joining us at 3 30 in the morning yeah i was gonna say that what do you think? <laughs> thank you so much i hope it was worth it yeah go, go back to bed go back to bed vanitha, are you still there are you still awake <laughs> that's exactly right uh nathan i really appreciated your your mental health focus just just really awesome and it is such a big part of what we do um, I know Kelly's left us, but similarly, I, I, I want to know what happened with these outliers. And I don't remember a 14-hour Sunny Street shift. So, um, <laughs> that would be a lot. Know, I'm pretty sure I'd remember that. So we'll have to have a look at that. But that's really exciting um, for us to, to get into. Um, Hugh, I think we need to have a chat offline because I don't even know what SNOMED is and all of the... You, you just use a lot of tricky stuff there, man. So I have to learn lots. Um, so keen to do so. Um, and um, on, on, I can't say your name. How do I say your name? Andrex? You're the student who did that big... The big yes. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I, just, I just love that a student is getting involved, like, and uh, I love messing with the minds of students. I do it a lot with medical student whenever I can uh -huh. um, but you certainly um, will have helped Sunny Street do our work so thank you very much for that. Oh thank you. Yeah that was a great um, like snapshot um, yeah. that we, we can definitely use so that's awesome thank you so much for getting involved and um, taking it on that's, that's great. Yeah. You are very welcome thank you. Thank you. And Liam I hope you're still with us but um, your stuff was like super scary because yeah. all this computer stuff um, which just looked like my computer when it, I have to take the hammer to it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was really interesting seeing, you know, in, in the numbers, what I actually know as a clinician, you know, those interactions between age, gender um, and chronic disease in particular. So um, mm -hmm. lay, just, you know, ease up on the honey soy chicken chips to avoid <laughs> your own hypertension. Uh, <laughs> But I look forward to, to seeing what else um, you can get up to for us. That was very cool. Yeah, and and Mar you. It's a pleasure. Uh, Marco, uh, Department of Transport and Main Road. So <laughs> I, I think you've missed your calling. Um, <laughs> maybe get into Department of Public Housing and uh, then we can talk even more. That'd be great. Um, but I just loved um, the idea of looking at the data um, to see where we need to go next, um, because obviously that's a that's a big decision. Um, and and whilst our patients and communities tell us where to go, it's always helpful um, using the data and the statistics that we do have to to drive that. So that was incredibly helpful, and I'd be excited to look at um, some places that we've got, you know, already building teams in, um, like Toowoomba and Sydney and Melbourne and those sorts of things to see, um, you know, how we could work together to to look at that. Um, Jason, bang for buck, man. That's yeah. what it's all about. And um, when our volunteers, you know, give up time away from their families, you know, that's what it's all about. And we need to be able to demonstrate to our volunteers that they have made an impact. So thank you very much um, for helping us scale that with that as a, as a really important focus. Cool. Um, David, ah. Uh, I just love maps. I mean, what's not to love about <laughs> <Yeah>. it? <laughs> what's not to love about a map? And I can't wait until Sunny Street you can put up a, you know, one of Australia. Uh, that that sounds fantastic. And I think, you know, that that simple, you know, here's where we are. Here's the number of conversations that we're having. It, it, that alone, you know, does speak does speak um, a lot to to everybody. Um, Great, thank and you. And I also want to know what happened on the 19th of November because you picked that up too. I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, and I'm sure I've missed people, but I've got a note here about Tony. 
Uh, P.S. Oh. Loved your background. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that was next level uh, commitment. So thank you so much. I'm going to blow my nose. It's not COVID. Okay, just hey, <laughs> bear, bear with me. Um, but I love that you um, can see Sonia and I up there talking um, to groups of, of CEOs. Um, and, and I have uh, no hesitation in pointing out that we've actually had the honour of looking after CEOs who are sleeping rough on the streets. Um, so we can, yeah, we can, we can talk to them and explain that we're all only a couple of paychecks away from things going very, very sideways for people. Um, but I just loved that you, you brought the emotion to it um, because I think the, those old white men in Navy suits um, need to learn a thing or two and uh, Sunny Street's happy to to have chats with them, of course. So thank you so much for that focus. And um, um, I'm sure I've missed people, and I'm sorry that I've missed people. But um, Frederick, key data, wow, love you all, and um, yeah, just can't wait to see you all uh, for a follow up soon. Yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let's let the discussion. It's only the beginning of the discussion, I guess. That that event was a bit of a Kickstarter, but uh, we use Slack like, to keep going and uh, a lot of online discussions and. Uh, I'll book a time for in March so we can have a bit of a Q&A, a bit more personalized and then follow up. Perfect. Thank you any, so much, everyone. Any words from anyone else? Because there's no pizza, so there's no networking. So. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick, uh, I can't believe you nearly forgot to present. <laughs> that was great. Uh, I was too busy checking the, everything that was <laughs> fine. <laughs> no, yours were really good. Thank you for tacking that on the end there. It's really good. Anyone else? A anyone from overseas who wants to talk? Fanita, you're still awake? Um, for, for me, one of yeah, the... Yeah, uh, no, I'm still awake, but I am going to go back yeah. to bed now. <laughs> okay. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining. So, always oh, talking, sorry. We missed someone. Oh, yeah. yep. Um, so, one of the kind of best parts of this whole data modeling and visualization journey was that I normally work with my company's data. And it's always for profit. It's banking and financial stuff, but it's good to... Um, particularly for me to step away from that and then to go into a new uh, kind of social social good um, data source. And I've been really loving the opportunity to work with um, data that um, doesn't directly benefit me, but it exponentially helps other people. And that's really been um, a really good uh, outcome of doing uh, events like this. So thanks for putting it together. Yeah. So I'm hoping that we could maybe run that kind of, social hackathons maybe every three months maybe once a quarter not too sure i guess it, it depends on a lot of things but uh it seems like the virtual options work fine like uh, with the technology we got we can work from home so it was easy so yeah it doesn't have to be brisbane oh. anymore now you can <laughs> no. open it up yeah That's true. <laughs> yeah so thanks again so i think i'm gonna have to wrap up and um take the bus home. <laughs> thanks everyone for joining and get some real food. Uh, thanks again. I think that was an amazing event. I think I was blown away and I hope it was useful for Natalie, Sonia and um, Nova. Thank, uh, you. And then, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for organizing the whole thing and yeah. kicking this off and pu pushing it out to the community, mate. So, that was love good your pleasure. work. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Frederick. Bye. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. See ya.